hot as in I'm sweating so much right now and I'm inside my air conditioned home. It's the time for reading. Summer is the time to read. It's the time to sit in the sun, sit in a patch of grass, and enjoy a good book. I love reading in the summer. Summer motivates me. Hi, hello, how are you? I'm Alex. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. And if you're coming back, we're best friends now. And also, thank you so, so much. I appreciate the support that I'm getting from you guys. You leave such lovely comments and I am so, so grateful for you for subscribing, for watching my videos, for enjoying, and I'm just very glad that you can get book recommendations from me and that you trust my opinion enough to read books and then you actually let me know when you enjoy them. That just, it makes me so happy. I hope you're doing well and if not, that's okay, I totally get it, we've all been there, and hopefully tomorrow is better. Today I wanted to recommend some reading for summer, some summer recommendations. Give me a second. So I asked on Instagram what you guys would like to see for summer reading recommendations, and I got some responses and I picked a couple of like recommendation prompts, I guess, and created a list of books based on that. I tried to pick books that I didn't recommend before or haven't recommended that much, slash haven't seen on booktube, booksta, etc, 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 because I wanted to bring something new for you guys. So without further ado, let's just get started. So the first genre that I have here is the one that I got asked about the most, which is Mentally Unstable Women, Unhinged Women, slash the It Girl books. So I have two books that center around women and then one that doesn't center around women, but I still felt it could fit the It Girl subcategory, if you will. And the first book I have here is Pretend I'm Dead by Jen Bagan. This book tells a story of Mona, who's our main character. She makes her living by being a cleaning lady. And it's kind of separated into four parts and the story centers around the different peoples whose homes she like cleans up slash people she builds relationship with. So like she falls in love with this very lovable, very handsome junkie, but they have a toxic relationship and things fall apart and she just leaves. She leaves where she's at. She goes out to Arizona, to the desert, and she meets a whole interesting cast of characters out there. It, I mean, it, I think the cover is pretty self-explanatory. It is peak unhinged women. Like, nothing happens, but so much happens. She's constantly having an existential crisis, and it just follows, like, her inner thoughts, her inner turmoil, like, how she loves cleaning, but she's also a photographer and she's trying to like hold on to that part of her life as well and nurture that part of her life as well and it's just so interesting to see how she interacts with people she's like not a likable character but also a relatable character um kind of like the unnamed character of my year of rest and relaxation i think this is different and I think it's really good, and it really definitely fits the unhinged women trope, and I think it also should be an it girl book. This is hot girl required reading. Anyone can be a hot girl. I think this is worth checking out. Definitely a good summer read. It's short, it's sweet, and like, you can probably finish it in a single sitting, you know? Next, we have a book that I'm actually reading right now, and it's a short story anthology, and that is Shit Cassandra Saw by Gwen E. Kirby. I saw this at the library, like, I just saw the cover, and I was like, yes, <laughs> I need to read this book immediately right now. The cover is fantastic, the art is just so great even the back of the book is nice and this is an anthology of short stories a lot of them reflect on mythology like i'm currently reading this so i haven't read all of them but for example the first one is about 
Cassandra and how she saw the future, but she didn't tell the Trojans anything because them as the title of the story. And it's it's just a lot of feminism, a lot of men getting what they deserve, getting what's coming for them, women getting to be like these all-powerful cockroach mutant things that men are afraid of and women just get to live their lives or like it's just it's hard to explain because all the stories are so different from one another but i would say the main theme is feminism unhinged women like women coming out on top kind of stuff and i think this is the perfect it girl unhinged women anthology of short stories I think this came out this year, so it's a very recent release. If you haven't heard of it, add it to your TBR right now. I think it's worth it. Um, if anything, this cover and the title, it speaks volumes. Am I right? Like, come on. I didn't, I, I didn't even read the back of the book. I just picked it up off the shelf. I'm like, yep, I'm borrowing this today. And then the last book is more of an it girl book and not so much of an unhinged woman book considering it's written by a man and the main characters are two men. But I think this is an it girl book and as Carly said over on her channel, all the hot intellectual girls read plays. Um, so if you want to look like a genius on the TTC, like you're not like other girls definitely read this it's just it fits this because it's very existential it is brilliant and it will make you stare at a wall for hours and that is waiting for godot by samuel beckett i read this at first i think i was in grade 12 because we had the option to read this or Death of a Salesman, but I had already read De Death of a Salesman back when I was in grade 11, so I decided to read Waiting for Godot, and I was the only person in my class that chose to read Waiting for Godot. And I, I think it's originally French, and this is translated? I might be so wrong. Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't matter. Um, so this is a play about two men who are waiting for Godot. However, Godot will never come because Godot doesn't exist. Um, Godot is just this concept they have come up with to pass their time, to have discussion, to have something to wait for, something to look forward to. It is absurd, it is existential, it is extremely short, and it is brilliant and like, I, I don't really think I can tell you what's going on in it. it it's the, the kind of book that you just have to read. You shouldn't really know much about it going into it because it is very short and I don't want to, like, take away from your experience. But it's excellent. One of the few books that I studied in school, in high school, that I enjoyed, that I loved, and it's definitely one of my favorite cannot recommend it enough. Next, um, we have poetry books because someone asked me for poetry and to be frank, I do not read poetry, but this was fairly easy for me because I recently read two poetry books that I absolutely fell in love with. So the first one, sh this author, she writes a lot about the seasons and I really like her her like the way she writes about nature so I feel like this would be fitting and that is the poetry of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. My sister got me this for Christmas last year and I absolutely loved it. She makes a point of gifting people poetry and I typically don't like poetry but she knows my taste so well and she got me this and it did not miss. I have tabbed so many parts. It is brilliant, beautifully written, very unhinged women poetry so it you know goes with my brand apparently on this website so highly highly recommend it i don't know what else to tell you other than i don't like poetry and i love this does that not sell it for you and the second poetry book i want to recommend i don't have a copy with me because i borrowed it from the library but that is the seven ages by louise Bleuch. I don't know how to pronounce her name. If I'm mispronouncing that, I'm so sorry. That is just 
how I've heard it being pronounced before. This is the perfect summer anthology of poetry because she writes so many poems about summertime and about that in-between feeling and about like that moment when summer turns into fall but you're still clinging on to, you know, the heat of the sun and not knowing what you're doing with yourself and what it's like to be young and not knowing what's going on and just literally just vibes. This poetry anthology is vibes. Loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I absolutely fell in love with it and I cannot wait to get my own copy. I've been looking at used bookstores so that I can mark up my own because this was brilliant and I loved it and I want to read the poems a million times over and over again. Definitely check this out. 1000% recommend. This was another one that was asked for quite a bit and that was queer literature. I like this one the best, Hot Gay Summer. I wanted to pick stuff that wasn't basic. I feel like a lot of specific books that are part of queer literature, you know, they, they're in the spotlight, but I wanted to try to pick stuff that had queer characters and presented queer themes that I don't see that much. One of them, to be fair, is quite popular, but I just love this book so much, so I had to put it on the list. The first book I want to recommend is Less by Andrew Sean Greer, and this tells a story of an almost 50-year-old gay man who gets invited to his ex-boyfriend's wedding. Now, he doesn't want to say yes, because that will just be weird and awkward for everyone, and he really does not want to go, but he doesn't want to say no because he feels like that's like saying that he's defeated, you know? So he decides to accept a bunch of invitations to these like literary events that he was invited to as an author around the world. So he could be like, sorry, I'm traveling the globe so I can't come to your silly little wedding. Les is kind of a shitty person when it comes to relationships. And this book doesn't take pity on him, but it reflects on everything he did in relationships and where he went wrong. And it's a lot about like that moment of realizing that, oh, I'm not the victim, I've hurt people too. And it's a lot about self-realization, it's fun because it takes place all around the world. He goes to Mexico, he goes to Morocco, he goes to Paris. It is super, super fun, very light read, very summery, takes place in the summer too, so that's perfect. And it'll take you on a vacation, for free if you borrow it from the library. What more could you ask for from a book? I don't know. The second book I want to recommend is one of my favorite books ever, and that is a graphic novel, and it's Fun Home, a family tragicomic by Alison Bechtel, or Bechtel. I'm still not sure how to pronounce her name. So I have recommended this before. I mentioned it in my queer graphic novels video, and I've probably mentioned it in a million other videos. But this book is fantastic, and it follows Allison's life as she's growing up. It shows her relationship with her father and what she struggled with after his sudden death. And most of all, it's about her experience as being a young lesbian woman and then finding out that her father was also gay and kind of paralleling their lives, if that makes sense. Fun Home stands for Funeral Home, um, which her, her dad owned a funeral home, and Allison just decides to call it Fun Home. It's so funny, so well written, it's just one of the most brilliant books I've ever read, and it's perfect if you are trying to get into reading because it is a graphic novel, so it's really easy to get into. It's just a great story, in my opinion. The last book for Hot Gay Summer that I want to recommend is another favorite of mine, and that is Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez. Catherine Hernandez is a Canadian author. Scarborough is the eastern part of Toronto, and it's like a low-income community. And this is a, it follows a story of different children living in Scarborough and their experiences. We have a beautiful cast of characters. Each voice in this book is so unique and so definitive. It's one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. I read it in one sitting. This is for sad girl summer. This is for hot gay summer. This is required reading for all of you. It is phenomenal. It made me cry, and I do not cry when I read books. It's pretty short, 
there is a movie that came out recently based on this and it's just I was floored when I read this. I, I struggle to talk about it because it's so beautiful. You know when you love a book so much you have a hard time talking about it because you don't know what to say and you're just like, read it. That's how I feel about this. Some people were like, okay, I don't like reading. What do I read? I don't know if you will watch this video, but I mean, these books are great just if you're trying to get into audiobooks or you're trying to ease into reading or you know, like reading on your commute because either you drive and that would be inappropriate or you get sick on the bus. So I have two really beautiful audiobooks that I have listened to that I think are great as audiobooks and could get you into reading, but either way, fantastic books to listen to. The first one I want to recommend is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Don't know if you heard of this author, she's super low-key. I listened to the audiobook for this after I had bought the book and I read along with the audiobook and sometimes I just listen to the audiobook, which is narrated by Toni Morrison herself. So it's fantastic. It is one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. It is heartbreaking. It is so good though and it's like it's also a really great classic if you're trying to get into classic because it's a very accessible style of writing, very accessible story and Toni Morrison's way of reading is just amazing. It really blew me away and it's it's told exactly the way she wrote it so it's exactly the way it's supposed to be read. Then I also want to recommend Citizen by Claudia Rankine. I think this is a series of essays. It's Citizen and American Lyric and I thought this was also a really beautiful audiobook because of the power in the narrator's voice. I cannot remember her name right now but I will put it down here. So good. It's about the experience of predominantly being a black woman, but in general being black in America and how black people are constantly othered in America and their experiences that they have here and the kind of struggle that that produces. Amazing audiobook. Definitely listen to it. It's very short. It's only two hours but very worthwhile. Then someone asked for something science-y and it, I mean you came to the right place. Um, I don't know if you guys know but I do have a degree in science. Um, I'm finishing up my master's right now and these are two books that I read in the last couple years that I absolutely loved and they are very accessible. So even if you don't know anything about biology, even if you are not a science kind of person but you're curious about things, in particular plants, I'm a little bit biased, um, then these books are great for you. The first is Lab Girl by Hope Jeharan. This is so good. It's a memoir. It's a little slow in the beginning but it really picks up and it's about Hope's experience as being a woman in STEM. She has her PhD. She studies like plant paleontology or something like that. It's just funny. It's sweet. Every other chapter she reflects on her life and parallels it to like a, a stage of life of a plant. It's so good. It's a memoir and it's so vivid and such a perfect summer read because it's so green and so plentiful, you know? I want to recommend a book by Robin Wall Kimmerer and that is Gathering Moss. This is her other book. She also wrote Breeding Sweetgrass, which I loved and spoke about before. This is all about moss. So Robin Wall Kimmerer, she's an ecologist, she works with plants, she works very closely with moss. Discusses a lot of like the science of moss, the cultural importance of moss, the use of moss beyond like scientific value, beyond its ecological value. Such a beautiful story. I listened to the audiobook and it was so, so nice. I just had to get a hard copy for myself so that I could annotate it. It is very short and sweet. And it is very good. I don't know if I just think it's good because I love plants and I'm a huge plant nerd, but I think anyone could appreciate this as long as they have some interest in the subject. And Robin Wall Kimmerer, she's a poet, she's a scientist, so her writing is just... And last but not least, I had a couple of people asking me for classics. Uh, someone asked for dumb bitch classics, which is right up my alley too because I don't read classics and I'm also a dumb bitch, so I only read <laughs> really easy classics. 
mostly classics written for children. Um, so what I'm gonna recommend is a perfect summer read and the perfect classic for this, and that is The Green Gage Summer by Rumor Godden. This tells a story of a bunch of kids that are flying in from England. They are going to France for a vacation with their mom, but then their mom gets sick, so she goes to the hospital. So then all these kids are just running loose in this luxury hotel on their own. And this hotel is on this gorgeous property. It is a very atmospheric book. So if you're trying to go on vacation through literature, this is the right place to start. And there is a green gauge orchard nearby and the children go there and they eat green gauges until they're sick to their stomach and never want to eat a single green gauge ever again. So good really interesting read, very very short and sweet, and it's extremely accessible in terms of a classic. I I am not here to say that I am smart or that I know how to read books, I just read a lot of them, and I think that this one was a good, fun, light, classic read. That's it, that's all. Thank you for sitting with me for so long. This video took much longer than I thought, but then again I was recommending 13 books to you, so you're welcome. I hope you can get a recommendation out of this. I hope you enjoy it. I'm also going to be a part of a readathon this summer, so there will be more summer reading recommendations coming your way, so get excited about it. If you like this video, like this video. If you want to see more of my content, subscribe. Help support my channel. And thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.